When the Roman Catholic Church combats a global rise in demonic possessions by reopening schools to train priests to perform exorcisms. Although nuns are forbidden to perform this ritual, a professor recognizes Sister Anne's gifts and agrees to train her. I welcome to Film Recap, and today we would be covering the horror thriller 2022 movie titled Pray for the Devil, so sit back and enjoy. In the opening scene, a little girl named Anne is in her room with the door locked. Suddenly, her mother knocks on the door and wants to be let in. Anne ignores her and leaves the door locked. Anne's mother continues to plead with her to open the door. Her mother begins violently banging against the door to try to get in. Finally, we see Anne's mother is banging her head against the door, clearly possessed by something. Years later, an adult Anne has become a nun who is currently on assignment, assisting at St. Michael the Archangel School of Exorcism in Boston. Sister Anne helps in the medical ward, attending to patients' daily needs, bathing, feeding, etc. One day, she befriends a young girl, a patient named Natalie. Anne is curious about the ways of exorcism and occasionally sneaks into an exorcism class taught by Father Quinn. She is later admonished because nuns are prohibited from being taught the ways of exorcisms. Priests can only perform the act of exorcism. One afternoon, Anne gives a sponge bath to a patient when he suddenly attacks her. He begins speaking in a different voice and says something that reminds Anne of what her mother used to say when she was possessed. The entire incident is caught on a security camera. Father Quinn is convinced that this demonic spirit will continue to target Anne and that she should know how to defend herself. After Father Quinn convinces the Cardinal, Anne is allowed to attend exorcism classes. Father Quinn takes the students to see an exorcism in person during her first class. The possessed individual is revealed to be Natalie. Two students, Father Dan and Father Raymond, are selected to try their hand at leading the exorcism. When it goes awry, Father Quinn tries to exorcise the demon from Natalie, but she gets the upper hand, and eventually runs into the room and can appeal to Natalie, and the demonic spirit leaves. Later, Anne is informed that the demonic entity merely retreated because it felt threatened, thus making the exorcism unsuccessful. Natalie is informed to be a terminal case. As Anne continues to be played by the same demonic spirit, she looks into records of individuals that were considered terminal cases. With Father Dan's help, Anne can access the hidden records of those patients, only finding one woman who could survive. Still, her face is heavily scared as a result of the exorcism. All the other patients died. Father Dant later reveals to Anne that he believes his pregnant sister is being possessed and wants Anne to lead an unauthorized exorcism. Since she had some success with Natalie, Anne decided to help. After an intense session, Anne can release the demon's hold on Dant's sister. In a private moment afterward, Anne tells Dant that she became pregnant with a little girl before she became a nun. Instead of choosing to raise her daughter, Anne gave her up for adoption right after the baby was born and is called into a meeting with Father Quinn and the Cardinal the next day. They reveal to Anne that, shortly after their session with Father Dang's sister, she committed suicide. As a result, Anne chooses to return to her monastery, Street Mary's. Father Dant later goes to see Anne at Street Mary's to tell her that Natalie was released, but shortly afterward, Natalie experiences a relapse and is transported by ambulance back to the hospital. But when the ambulance arrived, the doors were opened to reveal that Natalie had killed everyone inside the vehicle. Father Dan gives Anne a necklace that Natalie is holding in her hand. Anne looks at the necklace and tells Dan that this necklace is the same one she gave her daughter when she was born, thus revealing that Natalie is Anne's daughter. Dan convinces Anne to help lead another unauthorized exorcism. So he sneaks Anne into the catacombs under Street Michaels, where Natalie is being held. Natalie eventually breaks out and kills several priests, one of which is Father Raymond. After a struggle, Anne convinces the demonic spirit to release Natalie and take her instead. So the spirit leaves Natalie, who hides with Father Dante and goes into Sister Anne. Anne becomes possessed and begins hunting Natalie in the catacombs. Anne dispatches Dante, leaving him unconscious. As Natalie hides near a fountain filled with holy water, the possessed Anne attacks her. Anne's normal self eventually comes to and wrestles with the demon inside of her. As she physically battles with the spirit, her body falls into the fountain, and the holy water purges the spirit out of Anne's body. Anne is rescued from the water and reunites with Natalie and Dante. Anne recovers in the hospital and can say goodbye to Natalie. Natalie reunites with her adopted mother as Anne looks on. As a result of what happened, 
and is rewarded with an academic scholarship to study at the Vatican. As she says her goodbyes to Father Quinn, he reminds her that he knows who she is now that she has battled with the devil. On her way to the airport in a cab, Anne spots a woman staring at her on the street. The woman eventually appears beside Anne's window, sporting white eyes. Anne looks in front and sees that the cab driver is no longer in the driver's seat. He is now beside her in the back seat. Anne takes out her crucifix and puts it to the cab driver's face, ready to do battle again. The cab driver lunges at Anne as the film cuts to black, the end. If you enjoy content like this, why don't you like and subscribe for more, and we will see in the next movie recap.